In this video, we're going to briefly review development of the central nervous system in the embryo, fetus, and young child. And you'll see here that I've started with a drawing, a very rudimentary drawing um, of the brain. And so we're gonna start by talking about the embryo. And so when we talk about the embryo, we're referring to the first eight weeks after conception. And in the first 18 to 28 days after conception, the neural tube forms. And the neural tube is what really gives rise to the entire central nervous system. So once the, the neural tube closes, the central nervous system begins to develop in sort of a bottom-up direction. And so the first thing that begins to form after the neural tube closes is the spinal cord. And so I'm colored the spinal cord in in blue here. And so in the embryo, we can see that the spinal cord begins to form, and not only is it formed, but there actually starts to become some um, connections between nerve cells in the spinal cord, which then produce movements. So we can actually see movements in the embryo well before the mother can feel those movements. The brain begins to develop during this time, and by the end of the first trimester, the brain is formed in a very primitive sense with, with it being roughly divided into a forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Now, as we move on to the fetal stage of development, we see that the um, brainstem develops and begins to function. So in the second trimester in pregnancy, months three, four, and five, we start to see um, brainstem, brainstem function. And so we know that the brainstem actually controls sort of reflexive movements. So what we start to see is our breathing movements in the fetus. So of course the fetus isn't breathing um, in there, but we're seeing kind of rhythmical contractions of the chest wall and the diaphragm that look like breathing. We also see some suck and swallow reflexes. And from a kind of a cellular perspective, in the second trimester, we're starting to see neurons or nerve cells um, begin to form, proliferate, and migrate. So they start to form and differentiate and, and start to migrate to the different areas of the brain where they'll, um, they'll eventually live. By the end of the second trimester and into the third trimester, we start to see some formation of the cerebral cortex and some development of the cerebral cortex. And that's indicated in my drawing here um, in green. And so the first parts of the cerebral cortex that really start to develop are the primary motor and sensory areas that are just beginning to function uh, at birth. And by birth, we do see that some synapses are beginning to form as well. And when we talk about synapses, we're talking about connections between the different nerve cells. And so that's really beginning to happen in the third trimester and then really starts to accelerate um, once the baby's born. So what do we see in terms of brain development at and after birth? Well, at birth, the brain weighs, uh, is, is really quite large, um, and that's why babies have a, have a larger head um, relative to their bodies, but it still only weighs about a quarter of the adult brain, a quarter of the amount the adult brain weighs, and so the brain still has a lot of developing left to do. Neurons are largely formed, by this by birth but they're very poorly connected so synapses or connections between nerve cells have begun to form but they haven't started to form um, in a major way yet until birth and so what we see is that after birth we see this huge burst of synapse formation that occurs where Babies are, are uh, experiencing up to millions and millions of, of connections per second that will result in a total of trillions of connections. And so this begins this, what we call a stage of blooming and pruning. And so the blooming phase really starts immediately after birth and occurs in the first few years of life where and into early childhood, where the brain actually produces more synapses than it's ever going to need. And so this overproduction of synapses begins earlier in sensory regions. So this is why babies have better sensory function than they do motor function for a while. But then eventually 
goes on to motor and um, higher areas of the brain that control things like judgment and emotion and, and memory. So through early childhood, you see this, this huge burst of synapse formation. And then by middle childhood, you see sort of a pruning effect where it really is kind of a use it or lose it. There's that huge overproduction of synapses that allows for lots of learning and um, plasticity and for the, the baby and the child to um, learn from a variety of experiences. But if those synapses or those brain connections aren't, aren't used, they die off and they go away. And that's considered to be the pruning stage of development and really um, allows the brain to function a lot more um, quickly and more efficiently in the adult. So at the same time that this blooming and pruning sort of phenomenon is occurring, we're also seeing myelination occur. And myelin is this fatty substance that covers the nerves. And so if you think about, you know, like an electrical wire that has the, the kind of the plastic coating on it, um, that coating is there to allow that electrical signal to, to travel quickly and efficiently down that wire. And that's how myelin works on our nerves. And so myelin is this fatty substance. It covers the nerves, and it leads to fat, faster and more efficient transmission. And so similar to synapse formation, myelination begins earlier in sensory regions. So again, that's why we see more sophisticated sensory functions in children. Um, and then eventually progresses to higher areas, including motor areas and um, areas of the brain that, that control things like perception, judgment, and feelings. And so this myelination um, actually occurs through even the early 20s. And so that's why we see even teenagers and and individuals in their early 20s don't always show maybe the best um, judgment is because those areas of the brains are still truly not developed, developed yet. And so this occurs blooming and pruning and myelation, myelination, excuse me, occurs from childhood and even into early adulthood. And while the blooming and pruning phase of development is really uh, very much dependent on on sensory experiences to determine which synapses are truly kept, myelination is really thought to be more hardwired and is really not influenced much by the environment at all. The only specific environmental influence that's been identified is nutrition. And again, because that myelin is made up of fat, children that don't get enough fat in their diet tend to have some issues with neuro neurological development because of that poor myelination. So that, in a nutshell, is a summary of central nervous system development from um, the embryo through birth and even into childhood and early adulthood.